Welcome to Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. Hi, welcome to Ascension Integration. I'm Sandra Walter. This week I'm speaking about emotional clearing. And before I get into that very important topic, one of the more important processes that we can tackle during the Ascension process, I wanted to address something interesting that happened last week. I was speaking with a client last weekend, uh, the weekend before Easter, and we were talking about the clearing phase. Now, the clearing phase occurred from mid-December, right around the time the eclipse happened in in mid-December, all the way through mid-March, just prior to the equinox. And what occurred during the clearing phase was an anchoring of the 1111 energies, that Christed light that we've been talking about. And what happened was kind of unique. This Christed light came in on the 1111 and gave us this sense of underlying calm. All of a sudden, we felt like we knew that change was not just imminent, but it was present, that something had been anchored within the planet and within ourselves that gave us that peace and harmony of that fifth dimensional frequency, that higher dimensional frequency. And what occurred was because this is a photonic frequency, that very fine substance that alters not just the cellular structure, but it kind of busts apart all of this this density and all of the constructs that complement density. Uh, that exist in in the lower chakras. And one of those was the emotional levels, the mental levels, the egoic levels, all those lower density constructs that we've been living with were blasted by this frequency. And for a lot of us, it was very unpleasant. The Christed light came in, and although we knew that there wasn't room for the baggage and the extraneous dense things that we had been attached to, uh, it hit a lot of us for a loop. And what occurred was because this Christed light was anchored and because a lot of light workers and way showers and people that were kind of embracing the ascension process had let in a, a certain amount of light, a certain light quotient, so that they were able to embody and amplify more of that Christed light within themselves. And it was literally that that Christed photonic light saying, okay, nothing else can be here. And it just started clearing and clearing and clearing. And the next thing you know, things that you haven't thought about in 20 years or relationships or old emotions, things that you thought were completely gone, all rising up. And these things were, were the, those shadow parts of ourselves that we thought, well, I don't know, I thought I, I did enough clearing, I, sh- I should be good. And the next thing you know, we're just miserable for months on end. And for a lot of people, it got extremely dark. Now, that process, and I, this was something that I didn't want to talk about on my blog. And when I was having a conversation with a client a week ago, I said, you know what? I didn't want to talk about this on my blog, but that clearing phase was anticipated and made a little bit worse by some synthetic programs that were running. And synthetic, when I say synthetic programs, I mean unnatural, manipulative energies and frequencies that um, are targeted for people who are experiencing experiencing the clearing phase because the clearing phase was very purposeful in getting the that population of light workers and people who are going to take on a, a new role this year to get them completely cleared and ready and uh, essentially anchored in their true self by May. By, by the end of May, June, when things start getting a little weird. So all of, all of those folks who had taken on a certain amount of light, this Christed light comes in and goes, okay, you asked for it, and just blasts everything out that did not belong there anymore. For a lot of us, it was um, 
a lot, did a lot of soul searching and a lot of decision making. And at times it felt endless. Now, yes, it was amplified by this synthetic frequency. Um, and the, the programs of the dark are, are done. I mean, we're done with that. That program ended on the equinox, if not a few days before. And it was, it was starting to break apart when we had that, that timeline division at the end of February. And a lot of, you know, a lot of us felt that. And, and this isn't, you know, hierarchy, how come I didn't feel it or whatever. I'm just explaining what was happening from a, from a way shower point of view. Now, for me, I feel a responsibility at this point not to emphasize anything that brings up um, fear or, or blaming the dark for, for how we feel or what our process is about. Yes, the clearing phase occurred. Yes, there were programs running during it that made it possibly way too dark for some people. We actually lost some people during that time. And, and I thank them very much for their service and I honor their journey and it just got way too intense for some people. However, here's the thing. When a, when a light worker way shower begins to talk about dark programs on their blog or their site or whatever, in a way that says, you know, hey, this program is running and, you know, we're being attacked, we're being attacked. It puts you in that victim, that, that victim stance that just isn't, it just isn't true. And here's why it isn't true. Yeah, they anticipated that, you know, this is going to be a natural step in the ascension process for a, a lot of us who had been doing our work during 2011. Yes, it was purposeful. Yes, it was even better, in my opinion, that we went to those amplified dark areas because it got rid of it. We transcended it. And this is the, this is the thing that gets to me over and over again. No matter what program they come up with, no matter what is happening in that external realm of, of people still trying to control and manipulate us, no matter what they bring about, no matter what they try, we always transcend it. No matter, think about all the things that are put in place at this point that are attempting to stop the ascension process. And yet we continue to awaken. That is how strong and inevitable this shift in consciousness is. And that is what I would rather focus on, that no matter what, no matter what, you are infinite consciousness, no matter what. We are here experiencing the massive awakening of the human genome, the massive awakening of the, the planet and this frequency. And if we continue to say, look at what they are doing to us, look at what they are doing to the planet, we're not gonna get out of it anytime soon. Yes, the shift is inevitable, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we could make ascension completely normal and open and amplify that right in our communities? And that's what I talked about in Spiritual Coming Out and in the Timeline episode, and definitely uh, last, last uh, episode with the multidimensional consciousness. This is something that we're moving into, but we're not waiting anymore. And it doesn't matter what the dark wants to throw at us. And it doesn't matter even if you resonate with that or not. The thing is the clearing phase occurred and those programs are down. They are done. So I'm, I'm sorry, but just in my opinion, if anyone is still telling you they are controlling us, they are doing this, yeah, there's a lot of things still going on. But when it comes to targeting light workers, uh -uh, we're done, okay? The clearing phase if if you're if you're still in it, man, you got to get out um, because it's just it, it just destroys the uh, your capability to see things from a different perspective altogether, which a lot of us experienced, especially January, February. I mean, just dark, dark, dark. But now that we're out of it, and now that those programs have been turned off, dismantled, done, let's start focusing on clearing. The last of these beliefs, because that is what it is at the at the root of all of these emotional states, are these 
beliefs and these vows and these contracts and these agreements that we have running our, our lives and running our emotional states, and we don't want that anymore. So why do emotional clearing? Number one, you're going to feel amazing, <laughs> transcending everything that you have accumulated in this lifetime and in previous lifetimes because you're presenting the same material to yourself over and over again. And especially incarnations during the shift, if you're here and lessons are presenting and you just can't get over it, this is something that your soul and your higher levels are saying, please, I gotta, I've got to work through this. I've got to get out of this. And yes, it's as easy as just dropping it, but if you are not strong or, or developed enough to bind that up and out of all levels of your karmic existence, then do some emotional clearing. And this is great too for the mental levels to go, okay, I, I get it, I understand why this is happening, what I'm supposed to learn, and there are steps that you can take. So number one, you're gonna feel amazing and you're gonna be in a level of freedom where you have that perspective to go, wait a minute, that's not me. You're gonna be able to have perspective on not just your thoughts, but the thoughts of the collective and go, wait a minute, that's collective anxiety, it has nothing to do with me. So if you're very confused about why you're still in the throes of, of anxiety or emotional states, you're probably tapping into the collective as well as not, not doing the work, I mean, not doing the, the clearing work or not understanding it. There's so many people that can assist you with this. So it, it's, time to, it's time to get out of here because the, the thing about clearing these emotional states, and I'll explain in a, in a minute how we get out of there, but the thing about clearing these emotional states is if we want the shift to expand, if we want to be able to, to anchor new frequencies as they come in, if we really want to assist the planet and humanity, we have to start with ourselves. Yes, continue to do your mission work or your, your good stuff. Absolutely. You don't have to drop everything to do this. But we have to understand that embracing the authentic self is your greatest impact on the planet and humanity at this time is being authentic. Enough with hiding parts of ourselves, enough with repressing parts of ourselves, enough of trying to display ourselves as one thing and doing another. We're done. We're done with that. And the sooner that we get clear, the sooner that you get clear about your intentions and your authenticity, the better you will be able to affect people. And I hear this from clients a lot. What is my mission? I feel like I should be serving humanity. What do I do? I feel like I have no direction. I'm just kind of stuck. Well, this all begins with, you know, there is no attacking a new life purpose or attacking some brilliant mission unless you're in an authenticity that allows that to work. So if you're trying things, you're like, how come things just aren't working? And you're just kind of flailing at, at different ideas or whatever. It's time to get clear and authentic. And again, authentic does not mean perfection. Authentic means knowing your expression, your higher self, through and through. And it is, it's not difficult. It is really not difficult to step back from the egoic states and the mental states and the emotional states and go, okay, who and what am I about? And how come I keep blocking myself? Or how come I still have issues with people around me? Because we can't affect the collective consciousness in a positive way if we're still affecting ourselves in a negative way. If we're still carrying around, you know, trying to control the way that we think or trying, trying to control the way that we feel, we're not being authentic. So, so let's be genuine. And the best way to get comfortable with your genuine self is to get you to know yourself through emo emotional clearing, where you're facing all of those contracts and the agreements and what's going on right here, right now. Not digging in to the Akashic and figuring out exactly who you were, you know, 500 lifetimes ago. 
that's all well and good, but if you're not dealing with who you are right now, we don't want to overlay the experience of what you're here for right now with something that happened 10,000 years ago, 20,000 years ago, 300,000 years ago. Let's just experience what we are at right now and get that clear so that we can start being our, our authentic selves and affecting the collective. Because if we're all going to go off on these paths of, of searching for our past, we're not dealing with the present at all. And that is the lesson, is getting right here, right now, affecting the collective in a genuine way, right here, right now. And that self-love that comes with the compassion of clearing all these emotional contracts is the state we want to be in in order to anchor that vibration of love and affect our communities. You will affect everyone around you by being in that authentic state and learning self-love. And I'll tell you, it is not going to happen overnight because that stuff is dense and you're going to clear it and then you're going to have something else come up and then you're going to clear that again. But knowing how to clear it and understanding the perspective of what the emotional states truly are is going to give you a level of freedom and a sense of humor and a way to get out of the depression, the, the longing, all of this stuff that, that we experience when we're going through this clearing phase. So here we go. The most important thing is to kind of experience a freedom in these lower level, uh, this freedom from lower level domination. Pretty much they've been in charge. All that stuff in the lower chakras, all that survival and the fear and everything like that that we've been we're, we're done with. Oh, we're so done. I mean, can you sense that? I mean, the, the compassion and love that is coming in is saying, okay, will you just let go of that fear? And yet we're afraid of letting go of the fear. Isn't that ironic? You know, there's, there's this, this using suffering as a, as a safety net for, I don't understand what's coming next, so I'm just going to stay where I am. And that's very lizard brain, you know, that's very repetitive thinking, very habitual. And we're trying to break that apart because in order for our cells and our DNA to activate and expand into this higher frequency, we got to loosen up that lower level grip on our consciousness. So when we talk about, you know, moving from a carbon-based substance in our cells to a carbon silica base or more crystalline structure, we already have that crystalline structure in place. We're just moving into amplifying the crystalline structure. The carbon will probably still be around for a while, so there is no pop where you drop the carbon and instantly turn into you know, this silicon crystalline-based uh, consciousness. I don't think that's going to happen. I think there's going to be a lot of rewiring in December, and I think it's very important if you want to experience as much of that frequency, as much of the, the magic that is uh, December 2012 as possible. I think it's important to clear out as much of these lower density states because carbon is a very dense sub uh, substance and it's sitting there in your cellular structure and fear and safety issues hold it in that carbon structure. They, they vibrate at the level that keeps that carbon stronger than the stuff that's coming in. And what can occur is because this higher vibrational frequency is coming in and ampl amplifying the crystalline structure, it gets into a vibrational mismatch and then we can end up with disease, we can end up with conflicts, and we don't want to create that in our structure as we go through the shift. We want to make sure that we're clear and open and able to integrate this stuff as it increases throughout the course of the year and then whatever it is that we're in for at the end of December. So that this carbon-based structure that's living in our DNA and all of our cells, we want to make sure that it's not surrounded and anchored with these deep, you know, fears and beliefs and vows and everything because it prevents us from awakening. You can see that all around you. And we've, we've talked about this before, and I've talked about this on my website, too. 
it's it you know it's okay to be frustrated with how come people are awakening because if you feel that way you know so what feel it understand why understand why you feel that way but when it comes to having a little compassion for people who just aren't experiencing the process yet uh understand that the 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 carbon in their body i mean it's it's physical too as well as frequency the carbon in their body is just holding on to that stuff because they're still kind of believing the lie they're they're still in that fearful state they're still in that I'll wait until something happens and then I'll do it. Or why doesn't somebody else do it? And it's very disempowering. And as an awakened person, you probably understand this self-empowerment process is about not giving your power away. Okay, so how do we self-empower our cellular structure? Well, let's loosen up the grip that fear has on our cells. Let's start there. Sounds It sounds very logical, doesn't it? So how do we do that? Well, the stuff that's surrounding those those carbon molecules is this frequency of fear and safety. And fear and safety come from beliefs that are not just ingrained in the cellular structure, but there's also a lot of external stimulus that provides matrices that keep us there. And we all know about, you know, manipulation and control and the they, 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 they. All right, enough of the they have created this because it's going away. What are we going to do about amplifying the new stuff? This is time to lay the foundation for the new paradigm. And I know a lot of people are, are confused and, and don't and want like the final answer on what is going to occur with the planet. Good luck. <laughs> there are so many um, suspicions and predictions and and channelings and everything saying this is going to happen, that's going to happen. And, you know, you have to understand that on a galactic level, you know, galactic cycles are huge, long, long, long. So when a channel or an energy comes through and says soon, good luck. Soon could be, you know, 200 years from now. This is, um, and, and when it comes to transforming our structure from carbon to, to this new crystalline structure, that still has a little carbon in it as we move through, you know, higher fourth dimensional frequency and into fifth, that's still a carbon silica based substance. So we, we still have a sense of the physical. That's why when, when people say in the fifth dimension, you can just create things, um, that's, it's still a, a physical existence. You're still kind of tied to um, creating in form. It's not the same density of form, but it's uh, it's still got form and physicality attached to it. So that's that, that little bit of carbon that's still active. However, when it comes to transforming our bodies, they, there have been many teachings that have said, yeah, it'll probably take about 200 years for, for humanity to fully evolve into that state. Um, there are also people who say, you know, the whole planet's going to burst into something else by the spring equinox. I know George Kavasilis is, I think he's still saying that, that, uh, you know, everything's going to get just burst into this star state and we're all going to take our own paths off the planet. And some of us will ascend and some will just leave and go on back to our star systems or whatever. So there's, there's, a, there's a wide range of how this evolution in our consciousness is going to occur. Um, I suspect because of all the, the um, many indications that something big is occurring at the end of December and because of the uncanny coincidence of the whole Christ story and the return of this Christ delight and the anchoring of it and all of these these calendars and galactic cycles just happened to end on on that solstice in December and all the predictions about three days of darkness and it just happens to be you know all these sun gods that that incarnate always you know die on on the solstice and three days later they're coming back and it's uh it's a little uncanny for me to um, not suspect that something interesting is going to occur. However, I feel, and I 
teach this, that we, if we choose to experience the richest, deepest, wildest, mind-blowing, paradigm-shifting, consciousness-bending experience that we can have, why not go for it? Why not? What, what else are we doing? And, and if we honestly believe that all of the, the structures around us, if we've gotten to that level where you are experiencing this new perspective where everything is, is just entertainment at this point, and you realize, yeah, well, there's not much meaning behind, you know, doing this or doing that or whatever, but we're still here, so okay, I'll play this game as best I can, but I'm not going to believe in the the uh, constructs of reality that are being presented by other people at this point or other races. Forget it. I want my own experience. I want the highest experience that I can experience. So I say, why not go for it? This is, this is you know, this process that we're going through and this ascension process will unfold exactly as it is not only meant to, but exactly according to what you want to create in your reality. So myself as a creator incarnate, myself as an as a artist and as a writer and as a spiritualist and as a mystic, I'm ready to experience as much as I can. And I want to support my existence and my body vehicle and my consciousness in transforming to whatever is available, the highest thing that is available for me. And I made that decision a couple years ago and amazing things have happened. I mean, it really is, it really does prove to you how in control of your reality you truly are. But when it comes to mastering this process, I, I still have to say that emotional clearing gives you the freedom that a lot of us are, are just dying for. Oh, we're just longing for that sense of freedom. And how come I don't feel free? How come I'm still trapped in my, my head and my heart is, is broken over different relationships? And I'm having all these issues with family and everything. We need to get to that point of compassion and love and understanding in order to spread that all over the planet. So let's go through emotional clearing. Emotional clearing methods are varied. Um, I have come across a blend of emotional clearing steps that originated with, I think, Jalalia uh, Starr, who was one of the first people to just put down some concrete steps. Um, I don't agree with all of her steps, so I've taken bits of that, bits of uh, EFT, some emotional freedom technique, some clearing of soul contracts, some uh, mastery elements um, from William uh, Linville, and blended them together and kind of came up with something that worked for me. And I would love to um, actually teach a, a class in this and have like a, a, a webinar in that. And I'm still trying to figure that out because I work alone. And that, that's why my website is a complete mess right now as I do the renovations. But this, the, if anybody wants to co-create a, a workshop or a webinar on emotional clearing and, and how to get out of the dark, I would love to work with you, so contact me. But here's the thing. With the, the emotional clearing steps are, they start with, in, in my method, you start with family monad because that seems to be the thing that influences the, the incarnation the most. And that's your, your existence right here, right now. And yeah, it's fun to play with all the stuff that happened before, but you gotta start with family, okay immediate family, immediate relationships, the, the friends and the, and the people that have influenced you the most as far as the emotional states go. And that can, that can spread out to teachers and everything, but I highly recommend starting with the family. And what you do is you start with the relationship and what it, what it triggers within you. And you kind of take a look at that trigger and you say, okay, where, what is at the root of that 
trigger? Why does this person make me feel a certain way? Or, and, and even if it's an assumption that, oh, I, I still act like my mom or, you know, my uncle is, is uh, very influential or my grandfather said this to me once or whatever, start with whatever it is that triggers you or start just with like parental stuff because that's very helpful. And you kind of take a look at the roles that you're playing for each other. And once you get into the roles that they're playing for you, you start to realize that the lessons that you have pre-agreed to explore with these people that are in your family monads, because family monads tend to stick together. Soul groups can be huge, you know, thousands of people. And then family monads, as we kind of descended and, and tried to protect each other, we started incarnating in the same uh, family monad just to explore lessons and we're like okay team here we go <laughs> here's you know we're getting toward the shift okay who's who's got the the greatest chance of waking up okay Sandra you're gonna go and we're going to agree to play these roles so that you absolutely positively have to break out and wake up and it doesn't have to be you know these tragic roles or whatever but just little challenges that force you to embrace your true self and realize exactly who you are and what you want to do. So once we realize the, the, the game, you know, the contracts that have been set up before we all incarnated into these different roles for each other, once we realize the, the roles that we're playing for each other, that's when you start saying, okay, so that person is playing that role and really challenging me in this area because, and I'll tell you, the lesson almost always has to do with empowering the self and loving the self. So whatever it is that you need to bust up in that department is probably presenting and has been presenting in the family monad for a long time. Not the same for everybody, of course, but when it comes to light workers and way showers, some people have set up their incarnational journey to be extremely challenging and not supportive at all in order for them to finally go off on their own and discover exactly who they are and self-empower. Other people, you know, who are, who are born into the, that or have prearranged those contracts never, might never get it. You know, they might stay in that victim mentality or that abused mentality for a long time. So we have to realize that the, the very challenging journeys with the family monad or the, or the soul group, the more challenging the journey, the more that is based on mastery, the more that is being pushed to the forefront. So we have to realize that these contracts are all based on you saying, I want to step into my mastery. I think I have a shot. And everybody around you who is forcing you to do that is in agreement and playing that role, offering their life stream so that you can do it, so that you can be the one to step up, so that you can be the one to awaken. And when you start looking at the role that those other people are playing for you, because we are all masters, we are all the same source expressing it's not like somebody hasn't awakened because they're evil or something. Everybody's, you know, we're all in the same game. But those life streams, those people have volunteered their in, some, some parents for their entire lives to play that role in order for you to transcend and awaken and step into your mastery. So let's not judge other people's awareness or consciousness or what they used to do or what they did or what they said or whatever all of this is per your agreement with them and a lot of times they're going to show you the shadow parts of yourself you still have to bust up which happens a lot in in the family group with siblings with or with close friends showing you exactly what that shadow self is all about and shadow selves are an interesting thing, too, that you can transcend your, your judgment of people. Is if somebody is really challenging you, it's, it's because you're, you're challenging yourself. You know, you have to look at their behavior and go, 
oh, that's why I, you know, don't like that person or don't like their behavior because I still have part of that in myself that I don't like. So that's another journey for the, for the self-love mastery right there. But when it comes to emotional clearing, when we start having perspective on these contracts and roles that the, the main people in our lives are expressing, that's when we transcend and get out of the belief. When we find the belief that is at the base of, of what that relationship is about or what that relationship is challenging in you, that's when we can find the lesson. The lesson is that belief. The lesson is looking at that, that vow, that belief. And, and it doesn't matter if it's been around for several incarnations or not. Look at it right here and now. What am I still believing that is just not true? And how do I transcend that? So when you find the belief that's at the core of that relationship and you, you kind of transmute that, that relationship by going, okay, it is not my family at all. They are merely playing roles and it, it's not a way of... Um, it, it, well, it is a way of getting out of bl out of the blame game, you know, like, well, they just are doing that because that's them and they're never going to blah, blah, blah. It has nothing to do with their journey, you know, honor their journey, whatever journey they have volunteered to take, so be it. It has nothing to do with you now, uh, you know, telling them this is the role that you played and can't you see that or whatever it has nothing to do with you telling them what role they're playing. This has to do with your perspective and facing that that you have created this and agreed to it. And when you can see that someone is, is has taken part of their life and offered it to you in service, that is when you can start finding compassion and that wave of love washes over you that oh my gosh here I've been you know believing that this thing came from that person or I was embodying their belief or whatever and it all has to do with these agreements that we set up so that I can find the lesson and go oh okay now I get it and it's always going to be about empowering your self-love always 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 but the thing is once you embrace the idea and the the knowing that those people have taken on that role for you and that's all it is you know we, we always hear it's, it's just a ride it's just a game once you find that those people that you have spent many lifetimes with most likely are playing that role for you and have challenged you to rise to your mastery that's when you can you get washed over with compassion and gratitude for the role that those people have played for you in your life. And that's when it's not forgiveness, because forgiveness kind of indicates uh, guilt or blame. They did nothing wrong. You know, nobody did anything wrong. Um, you can't, you know, you can't possibly do anything wrong. Once you, once you experience that level of compassion, the entire relationship changes on an energetic level and it allows you to walk into another level of your authenticity because then you're going to step completely out of recreating the same arguments in the same dynamic over and over again you step out of it completely yes it might change the relationship um, in a way where you they're going to dissolve they're going to leave your life that's entirely possible. It's also possible, depending on how open and authentic and compassionate and loving you can be, to um, open them up. You know, you're, you're an amplifier then. Everybody that you get near is going to experience that freedom, that different energy of acceptance, that Christ consciousness, that unconditional state and there's, uh, there's absolutely no sense in saying, I am unconditional love, 
except when it comes to that guy <laughs> or that girl or my mom or, or whatever. I mean, let's let, let's step away from that completely. But we don't want to do it in a false way that like, yes, I understand. I love everyone. And then the second we're triggered, you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> unconditional, except for that person. Why, why, why? Well, let's do the emotional clearing. Let's take a look at the contract. Why are they challenging you in that way? What have they agreed to? What what are you creating for yourself in order for you to learn? And you get to the belief and you bust up the belief and you treat it with compassion and you ask yourself, am I willing to let go of this belief? Am I going to stop believing that I don't have a high, a, a high consciousness? Am I going to stop believing that I'm not good enough? I'm not wise enough. I need to learn more before I can blah, blah, blah. I need to be completely clear before I can help humanity. I need to, you know, learn so much more before I can love my neighbor. All of those beliefs need to go bye-bye, okay? We're, we're done. We're done. And when it comes to waking up our communities, I was having a discussion about this with, uh, with a client just a couple of days ago. You know, um, she was confused as to why this, you know, how do you find compassion for murder and violence? And how come my community isn't waking up? And, you know, I live in a dense town. How come, <laughs> you know, I don't even have anywhere to meditate or whatever. When you start looking at the, com the level of compassion for the role that other people are playing, whether it's conscious or not, a lot of times it's unconscious. When you start opening up your own authenticity and you start facing those fears of, I don't want to say anything until it's okay to say something. I don't want my neighbors to think I'm weird. You know, you don't have to come out full blown uh, talking about the ascension process. You know, that's, that's my job. You don't have to do that. Um, but you can point them to my website if they want to get curious about it. But here's the thing. If you just be authentic, even in small exchanges, like we said in the, um, the spiritual coming out discussion, little, little, little things, little ways of being authentic affect everything. Why do everything the same way over and over again? Then it's stagnation. And you experience that. You say, oh, my town's really dense or my neighbors aren't into this stuff or whatever. How do you even know if nobody's been being authentic with each other? How do you know your neighbor isn't, you know, going to church one moment and meditating the next? You know, may, they're too afraid to talk about these new things. How do you know that the person in the line in, in front of you at the grocery store uh, is or is not an ascension counselor? You know, and, and yet people have no idea because people aren't talking about it and people aren't being authentic about what they're experiencing. And it's really time to express that and not be afraid of expressing that. You know, a lot of people are concerned about dark attacks or, or whatever, you know, can't talk about it. I need to shield 24 seven and, you know, delete everything on my, you know, browser every night and absolutely have no connection of me to this ascension thing because, you know, the dark is going to come and get us, you know. Well, I mean, you're welcome to stay in that vibration as long as you need to. But if we want all of this nutsy stuff that's been going on on the planet to end, let's not make it easy for him. You know, I would I would highly recommend that everyone uh, stop being so precautious and scared and afraid and fearful about you know the dark finding you because uh, it's it's not happening, dear ones. It is not happening. I'm sorry. You know, you might get a tax audit. Okay, I get tax audits, but you know what? I got nothing to lose anyway. So I'm like, sure, whatever. Okay prove it and here's you know 10 million receipts over and over again or whatever that's fine who cares it's not going to stop me I'm not going to be like oh I'm getting audited because or I'm getting this invoice because they're probably after me or whatever so what I say come on bring it on whatever you get throw me in prison I will transform the entire prison I swear as, as source is my witness, <laughs> that prison is going to be the happiest place on earth. So bring it on. I don't care. 
You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the more people that get to that compassionate state, having enough compassion for brother humanity to speak your truth and to know that it is okay, that is how you serve. So many people are asking, what's my direction? What's my mission? How, how do I serve? I want to serve others. I want to serve others. Well, you ever talk to one of your coworkers about wanting to serve others? Well, no, they think it's weird. How do you know that? They probably think that you, you would think it, it's weird. You know, if nobody's talking about it, we're not changing anything. You want to change something, change yourself. So emotional clearing is the way to get all of those fears and those beliefs and those not enoughs and wait, wait, wait until something happens and then it'll be okay. You got to get that out of there. Because as the frequency changes, as we go through the, the chaos that is anticipated and the collective anxiety and all this hoo-ha that is surrounded with earth changes and everything else, as that starts to pick up, when we hit mid-year in June, you can't be clinging to these old beliefs be, and, and not be in your authenticity if you want to help people. If you really want to help people, you can't just have this huge bursting out of, I know what's going on when, when things are, are proven in the external. That, that helps no one. And especially if you're not clear of all those old beliefs and everything, because then you're just, you know, repeating more of your, you know, more of your uh, safety and fear issues to other people, which doesn't, does not help them at all. Neutrality, and unconditional love is the way to assist other people. But you got to start with yourself. So this clearing, what it does is uh, after you, you get through the belief, you transcend that lesson, you learn it, and you anchor it, and you look at it, and you say, am I willing to let this belief go? And if not, why not? What is it providing for me? because it's all about safety mechanisms at this point. What is that belief of mine keeping me from experiencing and why do I want it? Why do I keep creating this? Because you are creating this reality. Nobody, you know, once you, you get out of, the, of clearing all the people, then you're gonna be like, okay, now I need to, to take care of myself. What am, I, what am I creating that keeps that suffering going as a safety net? for a new experience? Why, why am I, you know, experiencing this, this level of freedom in my meditations and experiencing this joy? And then the next minute, I'm like, terrified to do something or I'm repeating some past behavior or habit that keeps me feeling like crap, but I kind of want to recreate feeling like crap because that's safe and I understand it. Well, we need to step out of that. Not only that, but if we really want to affect humanity, we've got to show them and open these doors and go, look, it is totally safe to let go of suffering. It is totally safe to let go of all of the fear. Look, here I am, wide open. It's okay, you know, because freedom is the new safety. You know, the, all of those fear mechanisms that, that kick in when we, when we want to feel, you know, <laughs> we want to feel better by feeling miserable. It's so ironic and it's so unneeded. And we just, we have to get out of it, you know. If you want to be blue some night, that's fine. And if you're going through relationship trauma and, you know, you could stay there as long as you want to, but transcending it and, and transcension, you know, is just taking something and, 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 uh, changing it into a, a lighter, higher form and letting it go. So we want to transcend these states and stop fretting over how come this isn't working, how come, how come, I, how come. Let's not focus on those, those issues. Let's focus on the base, the belief that is creating that, that belief that you have, and you have to take full responsibility for embodying that belief. You know, for me, I battled chronic, deep, dark depression for like 20 years ago. And then it popped up again, you know, during this clearing phase. And I just, I could not, 
I couldn't believe it. I was just like, oh my, are you kidding me? Why is this here? You know, and it's, yes, it's coming up so it can be released, but I'll be damned if I wasn't, didn't have, you know, that higher perspective, you know, feeling my higher self and my guides and everyone going, okay, I fully understand what is happening here. And at the same time, fully experiencing the absolute misery that it was at the same time, you know, and having just deep purging, endless crying fits and, and all this stuff and understanding that I had to experience that and I had to get to that lesson of self-love in order to transcend it and, and let it go and fully step into my authentic self. And it's been, and that depression for me, a lot of the times allowed for behavior that kept me in a, a that safety mechanism of, oh, you know, every time I step forward, something amazing happens, and then I start getting a lot of attention, and then people, you know, want to dig, 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 and, and I'm not ready to show my true self because there's too many freaky things going on with me, and I would just keep stepping back and stepping back, and I would, that step back created depression, and the depression would just feed on itself and then I was like, okay, I'm not helping anybody, you know, and I can't help anybody until I help myself and I don't know how to get out of here. And it wasn't until I got into the emotional clearing that uh, I was able to, to get out of there. And it's, you know, that can be a very dark place. And even though we have that higher perspective now, and even though we have this, this guidance and this higher self stepping in, we still need to take care of those lower levels and get them on the path to ascension. You know, they have to be on board. They're not going away. You're never gonna lose your emotional state. You're not gonna lose your mental ability. You're not gonna lose your ego. We're not leaving it. And we're not even leaving the body vehicle. So the, all those things, you know, that are not us, but we're using right now for this experience are coming with us. We're, we're just changing them into something else. Now, something I have on my website is called the lower level contract. And this is another good assistance for emotional clearing is retraining the lower levels. And it's a contract and basically it's you making a contract in a physical way. You print it out, you sign it, you read it, you point to it every time the mental, emotional and egoic levels start to recreate something that they did before or try to keep you trapped for safety. And what happens is you sign this contract and you treat it like the game that it is and every time the emotions come up or you start fretting about something or the mental level levels just will not leave you alone with we should do this we should do that I should do that how come you haven't found your mission yet blah 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 blah, blah. and all the egoic levels saying you know you have to win you have to survive blah 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 every time they come up you go hey 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 look at the contract and you point to it hanging on your wall and you say I'm sorry but we have a contract okay we're not doing that anymore and it's not like naughty ego you know in a way it is but it's it's saying you guys need to support me now and the ego is helpful when you start learning self-love then the ego transforms into something completely different that's empowerment that's self-empowerment and it's not ego out of survival, it's ego out of, yes, I absolutely know who I am and I'm going to be authentic and that is the way that I, what we used to call winning, you know, what we used to, to uh, you know, uh, that dominating ego now turns into domination of the self. You know, the self, the higher self, that higher love is what dominates your existence and the emotions then turn into feeling they transform into that feeling from the heart and the mind level starts thinking about the higher thing it starts quieting the mind and the mind starts creating things that assist your journey instead of busting it apart or keeping it held back so emotional clearing through these contracts through the uh the amplification of our crystalline structures and releasing all of this density out of our cells is what gives us that state of authenticity where then we can go out and truly affect the collective and it doesn't have to be this high mission of great importance it is 
having the guts to speak your peace, to speak your truth all the time, no matter what, and having absolute compassion for everything that is occurring on the planet. Yes, all the war and the violence will be around until we don't need it anymore. So let's stop creating and not doing anything about the violence and the war that is within us. It's as simple as that. Now, if you would like more assistance with emotional clearing, uh, or if you would like to co-create that webinar with me, that would be great. Uh, visit me at my website, and the address is in the little little tag commercial at the end of the show, which is very cute. Um, and if anyone has been visiting my website, I apologize that it's taking so long for me to get my act together, but I'm slowly getting it done. Um, it's been uh, It's been a balance between counseling sessions and trying to take care of the website. So thank you for your patience and thank you so much for listening. And I wish you all a beautiful and creative week. This has been Ascension Integration with Sandra Walter. For more information on Ascension or Ascension Counseling, visit Sandra on the web at www.sandrawalter.com. Thank you.